Hello, and welcome to Minecraft on this glorious sunrise, which is actually like noon wherever I'm at. But uh, I'm here to talk to you all about artificial intelligence and uh, neural networks in Minecraft. So as you can see here, my friend M. Williams, I'm guessing it's Marlon Williams, is uh, attacking Undefined. Um, so I'll give you guys some backdrop here is... I'm a Minecraft enthusiast and a uh, artificial intelligence enthusiast. And professionally, I specialize in Amazon Web Services and architecting large-scale applications on that. But I feel that data plays and machine learning is going to be huge. So I decided to build my own neural network. This is the third neural network project I've been on. First one being called Fish Tank. The second one being called Chaos Engine. And the third one being called Chaos Craft. So you can see here we have our friend Byron Williams. I guess for those of you guys that don't know, let's take a look at his brain. What a it's not what the AWS. This is Marlon Williams' brain. Um, assuming the socket server's on, but either way. Um, so you can see here we have a decision tree. This is a randomly um, built decision tree. So I based this off MindFlyer. MindFlyer has a series of outputs like look at or uh, sleep or chat or dig or toss item, uh, equip, unequip. It also has a series of events uh, that it that you can sense. So if a block is updated of a certain type, or a player is joined, or an entity has spawned, or an entity has moved, all those are things that this bot is allowed to understand. Now, traditionally, people would use the software to write a bot and say, the bot does this, and this happens. When you're handed this, then do this. Well, I decided to let chaos ensue and generate these random neural networks. Um, so I apologize, I'm on Ubuntu, so if it seems kind of weird, you're seeing kind of the workspaces flip around and stuff, just get used to it. I'm about to knock over my socket server. Yeah, yeah, live. So I'm running some of these locally right now because I've been moving pretty fast, but I actually do have um, like the gaming server and all this stuff hosted on AWS and Docker. Um, and I do have a bunch of the bots that are capable of being spawned up there. Um, oh, geez. We need to be babies. D. Davies, all right, good. Well, so Marlon Williams did not survive our fitness function, and from the looks of it, D. Davies won't. So basically, you know, it's like the third time I've recorded this, so I'm really hoping this thing kind of floats. No. Oh, Marlon Williams is gone, that's right. I, Marlon Williams did not survive the fitness function. Hold on, we're going to try this again with D. Davies. It's going to disappear eventually, too. So this is D. Davies' brain. As you can see, if uh, and some of these are these are basically AND nodes. So if a chess lid moves and the player collects the AND, both those two things happen, then it can trigger the look at. Or if the player is forced to move, he'll look. Oops, let's see if that works. Let's see if we can move it. No. Boom. I can't push him, I guess. Then. Blow him up or something. I can jump water on him. Let's see if it makes him look. I actually don't know what it'll make him look at, though. Yeah. I'm going to drown if I'm not careful. Oh, I'm totally going to drown poor D. Davies. Well, that was boring, but let's boot up some friends for him. You're saying, why on earth? I just restarted it. I'm sorry. I booted up. Let's see what we're going to get here. Elmo. All right, we got an Elmo, and we're going to have a third bot. B Knight, Bobby Knight. All right. Let's see if any of them are alive. Oh, and Shania Twain. Shania Twain is trying to trade with a villager. She's turning. So let's take a look at her brain. Again, completely randomly built decision trees. And so for those of you guys not familiar, these decision trees, you know, we, we kind of run these random decision trees through a fitness function. And right now, the only fitness function I have is, do you move? So if she can see a certain block, one of these, she can see a block of any of these types. And for those of you guys that don't know, I'll put this in here, but here's where you can see block types and stuff. So those IDs, you know, correspond with dirt or cobblestone or whatever. But evidently, she sees a block of one of these types, which is triggering turn left. And if they don't actually move more than 10 blocks in 30 seconds, I nuke them and start again. Ah, Elmo's trying to dig something, it looks like. So 
let's see if we can take a look at Elmer's brain before he gets nuked. Should have upped the time on that for this demo. Ah, there we go. The two things. So, like, if it rains and he hears a chat, it could trigger something else. Yeah, it'll trigger that node, which is dependent on by that node there. Look right, which also needs rain and move. It rains a little heavily weighted here. I've got to work on my generation stuff. Now, if he hears a chat, he'll stop walking. But I'm get, betting, he, betting he got new snows right there. And we should be able to see his stuff higher enough. I don't know why it's not happening. But, yeah. So, we get, we get the idea. So I've seen some interesting behaviors. The first generation of these guys I booted up in, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's just, L. Michaels just got swapped out for C. Powell, I guess. Um, you can see these guys are just basically done. That's why I have that 30 seconds. you got to make at least one move. Um, nope, C. Powell is just chatting. <laughs> it's just chatting in general. We can take a look at his brain and see what, what makes him think. Refresh this and let it just refresh right away. Uh, I've only been working on this for a week, so that's why it's still really rough around the edges. But I wanted to get some feedback out there from all <clears throat> everybody out there. The socket server's down. Well, socket server's up. Just not getting, seeing this firing. Oh, that's annoying. That was working before. C. Powell's definitely doing something. Somebody just drowned, Dr. J. Oh, there it goes. We got a mover. That's ah, not showing up. This is, that's triggering him. Yeah, well, so he'll survive. Yep. Yeah, except when he gets to smack it. Well, he'll, he'll max out the fitness function at least. He'll be back. We can take a look here and see what's going on. So I twin. All, oh, he's actually running on the cloud, isn't he? No, I don't have anything up there. He's back in the game. Sometimes they get disconnected, but something triggered Colin Powell to run. He should survive. Oh, why? Oh, there we go. You're controlling Colin Powell. We got two do right this, huh? Ah, disconnected spam. He was whatever it was that was triggering his brain so much that they the server kicked him for spam and it did it again. He's going to drown, probably. But I, luckily, my fitness function doesn't care if they drown, it just cares if they move right now. You also notice there's a bunch of birds in here because I throw eggs at these things when I'm waiting for stuff to load and I get bored. I kept blowing them up, but then that makes it really annoying on the screen modes. So, we've got a couple more ones here. So basically, you're uh, probably wondering at this point, why? Why Why do all this? Why not? I don't know. They're, they're, I'm eventually going to fork their um, their bodies and their, and their uh, fork their genetic learning algorithm so like, you know, if they survive for more than the 24 hours, I'm going to fork it, and then they'll I'll keep 80% of the brain nodes, and I'll destroy 20%, and I'll add another 40%. And so there'll be a whole generation two of little baby C. Powells running around, and uh, and they'll you know we'll see if they survive more efficiently or less efficiently. The ones that survive, well then I will do the same thing. I'll generate you know generation three, four, and after a thousand generations, I'm really curious what these guys can do. But I'm really hoping. So I let this thing run for a couple thousand generations and they come back and the whole thing's like, they've got some like giant, you know, pyramid, space age looking pyramids built or something like that, that they just that somehow generated, you know, so, um, okay, Susan just stared at the floor. I'm going to say, I don't know how I'm done. I don't why, what, oh, there we go. He's firing. He's actually run pretty far. He's moving. That, that indicates that it's a lot. So he's forced to move. Activate an item. See if entity he senses an entity moving and he moves, then he chats. I guess that's interesting. You know, so let's let's, uh, let's see. Entity move. That'd be one of these entity types. So that's good. So yeah, intriguing, intriguing. There we go. All right. Well, thank you for listening. Evidently, I'm approaching the free recording under this screen chapter tool, which I will no longer be using after this. Um, my name is Matt Lee. Uh, my blog is ship or get off the pot. That's S-H-I-P or get off the pot dot com, where I'll be posting this and hopefully many more like it. If you like this stuff, I'm not usually the guy to say upvote, but I kind of want to know if people are interested in this thing. If you Minecraft guys are going to like it. So we'll find out. I'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. We're at Generation Zero. Can't